This is one of my favorite scroll saw patterns. It comes from Steve Good. He's calling it Resurrection, which is exactly what it is. A depiction of the resurrection of Jesus Christ at the uh, outside of the tomb. And it consists of several layers. And I believe that Steve showed all of these in quarter inch thick, ma thick material but I wanted to give it more depth than that. So I made the back layer from three quarter inch thick oak, added the layer with the three crosses and three quarter inch sapele, then again made the front layer with the lowest hill from three quarter inch oak. The stone was, that was rolled away from the entrance is three quarter inch oak, and the figures are one quarter inch maple. I started by attaching the patterns to the wood I'd be using for this decoration. I use scroll saw tape for this because it's easy to attach the wood, it holds well during cutting, and it peels off quickly when you're done, leaving no residue behind. I'll leave a link to my source for the scroll saw tape in the description. I'm using red oak for two sets of hills and the stone because it's reasonably priced, I like working with it, and most customers like the look of oak. This is four quarter red oak, which comes in at 13 sixteenths from my supplier. Most times I leave it at 13 16 but sometimes I'll run it through the thickness planer and take 1 32nd off each side if it's still a little rough. The edges are always rough, so I ran it through the table saw and ripped just enough off each edge to leave a smooth surface, surface for the bottoms of the hills. My rule of thumb for this thickness of material is to use a number 9 blade, and I chose a number 9 Pegasus modified geometry. I tested 14 different blades, and this proved to be my favorite for most situations. I'll leave a link to my video on that blade test in case you'd like to watch it later. The cuts for the oak sections are all simple enough that a beginner on the scroll saw can make them. Just take your time and let the blade do the work. The board I used was wide enough to fit the big hill on one side, the small hill across from it, and the stone in the space left over between the hills. I cut the large hill first, then I cut the outline of the smaller hill next, and went back and cut the cave opening. The order of cutting doesn't really matter, I just did it this way because it's easier to maneuver when cut from the larger piece. I cut the stone last. The piece left over after these cuts was too small to save for anything else, so I tossed it in the scrap basket. Next, I moved on to cutting the sapele section with the crosses on top of the hill. The sapele board I had in stock was wide enough that I could fit two patterns across from each other, slightly staggered, hoist as little of the wood as possible. Sapele costs about twice as much as oak, but I don't like to waste any more wood than is absolutely necessary. This is the most difficult part of the set other than the figures, which we'll cut next. It's just a long, curved surface until you get to the crosses. Cutting them requires a lot of quick turns, but just keep following the lines and you'll be okay. You don't need to worry if the cross beam edges don't have perfect 90 degree edges. Uh, they're actually slightly rounded on the pattern, and I think this makes them more, look more realistic anyway. The technique you need to learn for making tight turns is to cut up to the point where you need to turn, back off the pressure on the blade slightly, give it the workpiece, then start cutting in the new direction by putting pressure on the blade again. The crosses are somewhat fragile, so cut them carefully, and also use caution when you remove the scrap piece after you're done cutting all the way around the hill. I saved cutting the cave opening until last because the work piece is smaller now and easier to handle. It always pays to take a couple of minutes before you start cutting to plan the order for your cuts. I peeled off the scroll saw tape once I finished the cut for the cave. I did the same on the oak pieces, then I set the pieces in order so you can start to get a feel for what the piece will look like when completed. That blade was getting dull, so when I removed it to install a number three blade to cut the quarter inch thick figures, I tossed the dull blade. If you're new to scroll sawing, you need to get used to the idea of throwing away blades once they become dull. They're relatively inexpensive and a cost of pursuing this as a hobby or as a business. I'm making 20 of the resurrection scene in this batch, so that's why you see more than one of each figure on this piece of quarter inch maple. The maple piece was actually 18 inches long, so I first cut it into more manageable sized sections. I'm using a number three blade for these figures. It's either a Nequa blade or Pegasus modified geometry blade. I actually don't remember which. I have both on hand. For most of the figures, I make the outside cut, then go back and cut the accent lines. You can also cut these as you go along the outside of the figure. 
I think it's a matter of personal preference, not any hard and fast rule for scroll sawing. I will mention here that, due to the small size of these figures, cutting the details afterward, afterward means your fingers will get very close to the blade. If this makes you in the least bit uncomfortable, then don't do it this way. Scroll saw is safer than many power tools, but if the blade is sharp enough to cut oak and maple, it certainly won't stop at the touch of a finger. Always be safety conscious. Four figures are now all cut. Next step is the glue up. You can see that I cut the parts for several of the resurrection scene and stacked them up on my workbench, ready to assemble. So let's move on. The edges of any pieces you cut can be sharp, so I take a piece of 120 grit sandpaper to ease them over slightly. I don't think they need as much rounding over as you, should, as you would get from a router. Besides, rocks aren't usually all that smooth, right? The bottoms of the sapele pieces were too rough. Evidently, I forgot to run that board through the table saw to clean up the edges. I'll clean them up at my disc belt sander combination tool. The figures needed a little sanding on the back, a very slight tear out from the scroll saw blade. I accomplished this by laying a half sheet of 120 grit sandpaper on a flat piece of masonite, then rubbed the figures against that a few times. If I was only going to be gluing one or two of these, I'd just use my fingers to spread the glue around. But since I'm doing several, I'm going to use a brush. These are actually acid brushes, but a box of them is cheap, and if I wash the brush after I'm done, each can be uh, reused several times. The only downside to these is that occasionally some of the bristles come off. You probably want to pull them off before putting your project's pieces together. I put a generous amount of glue on the smaller piece, then put it in place on top of the piece under it. This is one of those places where I only spread glue on one part, because if I also add glue to the piece next to it, I might end up putting glue where it's not needed. I put these together many times, and this method works fine. The one alignment issue you want to watch on this project is to make sure all the bottoms will sit flat once the scene is tipped into display position. These would be awkward to clamp, so I'm going to inject what may be a small woodworking heresy here. I'm not going to use clamps. Again, I've made this project many times before. I've never clamped the assembly while the glue dried, and it's always turned out fine. You may agree or disagree with me, but that's how I did it on this project. I like the placement of the figures in the pattern photo, so that's where I put them. Jesus is on front of the stone, the man to his left, Mary and the angel to the other side of the tomb entrance. Since these figures are small, I used a glue bottle with a small tip to dispense the glue, and I just used my finger to spread it. Now this unit can be set aside for the glue to dry, and then I'll apply a spray polyurethane finish. Here's the completed resurrection scene. It's one of my favorite projects, and it is sold well both online and in my retail store. The one on display in my store always generates positive compliments. The resurrection scene is about 8 inches long, 4 and a quarter high, and 3 and a quarter deep. You can display this all year long, not just at Easter, as a symbol of your faith. I'd appreciate it when we respond to any comments on this video. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe so you're notified when the next video is released.